Hey, welcome to the channel. My name is Jason, and here I talk about all things story. And the story I'm talking about today is Across the Nightingale Floor, Tales of the Tory, Book One by Leanne Hearn. Now, this is the second episode of my series, The First Five Pages, where I analyze, fix, admire, etc., etc., the first five pages or 1,000 words of a novel to make it better, or in this case, to really show you the power of good writing. Because this one was a request from the comments by my good buddy, Matt, so thank you for the suggestion. And this, I really appreciate it because it got me thinking about that this series shouldn't really be only about novels that I feel could be improved upon, but ones that are written very well. And then use these examples as ways to show you what makes good writing. And speaking of that, I'll go into a little bit of detail about what this is if you're new here. So if you aren't new here and you know what this is all about and you want to see me talk about the writing itself, Use the chapter selection down below. All right, this series was inspired by other writers I know, other people that join my streams that feel as if they have imposter syndrome, that their stuff is just not good enough. And I've read countless novels that could definitely be improved. Everything by the line by line work, the dialogue, the characterization, and on and on and on. And so what I thought I'd do is uh, take one of these novels, particularly the first one, that I ever really noticed in my time taking writing seriously, and that being uh, Brandon Sanderson's The Way of Kings. If you haven't checked that one out, it's a pretty heavy edit session. I'll put a card up here for you if you wanna see that one. But my philosophy is show, don't tell, just like the old writing adage. And whereas a lot of author tube people, I guess that's a term, uh, they tell you how to make good characters or how to structure something. What I wanna do is actually show you what makes good writing. I wanna show you side by side on the left side, I'll have the original document. On the right side, I will have the edits or my comments, and you can compare both. And those links will be down in the description so you can open up the Google Docs yourself and take a look. And I will do my best to explain why I'm changing things or what makes things great because I think that's really important as well. Using writing craft terminology uh, to the best of my ability, but hopefully uh, keeping it conversational. So this one's gonna be short. I think it's gonna be more of an admiration piece than anything else. I did make a few minor edits here, but this is a great example of what powerful writing can do. So Matt, thank you. You are a storyteller, my friend. Um, I hope you enjoy this one. So let's get into it. So here we are. My big dumb head is down at the bottom, much smaller, you're welcome. Let's get into the writing here. So as I said, on the left, here we have the manuscript as it stands, the first 1,000 words or so, which is, you know, about five pages. And on the right is my edit. Let's start at the top, right? Let's start with the first line. And this is a great, great first line. So let's read it. My mother used to threaten to tear me into eight pieces if I knocked over the water bucket. Now that immediately gets me interested. That's a great first line. And, and like I said, my philosophy on first lines are ask questions. So my mother used to threaten me, threaten to tear me into eight pieces if I knocked over the water bucket. So I think immediately we know this as a, as a young child. I, I'm not sure the age, but um, someone with that kind of hyperbole obviously is a child, but it's a very intriguing line for that reason. I mean, tear me into eight pieces. It immediately grabs you. It immediately tells a lot about this character. So the only thing I changed, I'll read, I'll, I'll continue reading. So comma pretended or, or sorry, I think I deleted that. So or pretended not to hear her calling me to come home as the dusk thickened and the cicadas shrilling increased. So the reason why I changed this and I'll show you what I changed it to right over here. So my mother used to threaten to tear me in eight pieces if I knocked over the water bucket. And especially when I pretended not to hear her calling me to come home, etc., etc. So why did I change that? I feel like this very next line, I would hear her voice, rough and fierce, echoing through the lonely valley. Where is that wretched boy? I'll tear him apart when he gets back. So um, the reason why I changed it to, and especially when, is that allows it to build on the first line, right? I feel like as it stands, my mother used to threaten to tear me into eight pieces if I knocked over the water or pretended not to hear her calling me to come home as the, so, do you see what I mean? How those are almost two separate sentences and it kind of diminishes the weight of this one here. This is almost like an aside. And when you say, especially 
that builds on it. And the reason why I built upon that first line or the second half of that first line is because it immediately goes into the next sentence. I would hear her voice. So he's pretending not to hear her calling him to come home. Like I said, I changed it because it leads directly here. I would hear her voice rough and fierce echoing through the lonely valley. Where's that wretched boy? So hopefully that makes sense. I think it's now this is this is a nitpick. I don't think this is terrible. It's just a bit jarring. So always think you, you want to have your first line breathe. You want to have impact or you want the flow. You want it to really just enter the head of of the reader and just stick. And I think this, in my opinion, improves it slightly. So let's move on. And and before you can see very few highlights here. So I have that main one. I have one here. And then one here, one here. So this is a lot less than The Way of Kings. And because this is extremely well written and I really appreciated the characterization. So we learn that I believe this boy is 15, yes. But let me read this next part and I'll explain why it's so great. But when I did get back, muddy from sliding down the hillside, bruised from fighting, once bleeding great spouts of blood from a stone wound to the head, I still have that scar like a silvered thumbnail. There would be the fire and the smell of soup, and my mother's arms not tearing me apart but trying to hold me, clean my face, or straighten my hair, while I twisted like a lizard to get away from her. That is all one sentence, and it's beautiful. The reason why it is, it does two things. It shows the age of the child. It, it creates a tempo, it creates a pace, it creates this great flow of just action, after action so we, we picture this kid mutt he's he's running and he's muddy from sliding down the hill bruised and bleeding once bleeding great spouts of blood from a stone wound you know very visual very colorful and i love this aside i still have that scar like a silvered thumbnail it's almost like he's pausing to look at the camera there would be a fire and the smell of soup and so these are highly descriptive words these are very visual words and they're really luring you into the scene uh, it's as if the camera is just moving closer and closer and closer, you know, and using all the senses. That's another thing that a lot of people forget, you know, smell, sight, sound, everything. There would be the fire. That is, you know, your sense of touch. That could be auditory as well. The smell of soup and my mother's arms not tearing me apart, but trying to hold me. So I just Im imagine, you know, this, this kid is afraid of his mother, but as soon as he runs in, he's all muddy. His mother arms, his mother's arms just embrace him, cleaning his face, doing all these motherly things, straighten his hair while he twisted like a leather lizard to get away from her. So we start from fear, um, and and it seems like you know this kid, he he doesn't like it. No kids like this kind of stuff. But the mother, she loves him. Where's that wretched boy? I'll tear him apart when he gets back. It is a false threat, and and I just really love this lead in because not only it's visual, it uses so many senses but it really shows the age of the kid because you know if you ever if you ever speak to a kid it's like and then and then and then and then and then right it's like a run-on sentence and that's exactly what this is so not only does it show characterization but it creates a pace it creates a tempo of a child and and that's what i love so much about it so and you know everything should be doing multiple multiple things in writing as i've said so let's move on um, so there's a little bit of exposition here, and this will kind of speak to this next highlight. Uh, she'd given, okay, uh, she was strong from endless hard work and not old. She'd given birth to me before she was 17, and when she held me, I could see we had the same skin, although in other ways we were not much alike. She having broad, placid features, while mine, I'd been told, for we had no mirrors in the remote mountain village of Mino, were finer like a hawk's. The wrestling usually ended with her winning. Her prize being the hug I could not escape from. This is all great stuff. And her voice would whisper in my ears the words of blessings of the hidden while my stepfather grumbled mildly that he spoiled, that she spoiled me and the little girls, my half-sisters, jumped around us for their share of the hug and the blessing. So again, doing so much work here. It's talking about the relationship between mother and son as well as stepfather as well as these sisters. I mean, it's painting this beautiful picture. And again, in, let's see, what is this? Is this one sentence right here? No, it's, they're, they're still longer sentences, but um, not quite as long as that first one. So I thought it was a manner of speaking. So why did I highlight this? 
because this paragraph calls back to way up here. So this is sort of the heart of what he's getting at. Actually, it calls back up to here. I'll call, I'll tear him apart when he gets back. So that's what he's referring to. I thought it was a manner of speaking. The issue is, and I see this a lot, honestly, I see this a lot with dialogue. So you'll have um, a character say something and you'll have a massive paragraph with the character saying something else, sort of in the span of that sentence. And it's usually indicated by um, a lot of uh, in interior thought, right? Not direct thought, usually indirect thought, narration, flashback, something like that. The problem with that is sometimes you forget where you began and that's not good. And so the I just changed this very minor. Uh, so I thought it was a manner of speaking because I remember when I read this and I think that's a really good indicator when something's off is when uh, that's why you should put your work away and then come back to it. But I it kind of I, I had to pause and think, wait, what? I'm like, oh, he's talking about the um, the tearing in eight pieces. So what I changed it to really I, I just it's kind of a reminder for the reader so i thought it was a manner of speaking this threat of tearing me into eight pieces now some people might think that that is unnecessary maybe that's redundant uh, but um actually i just worked with my editor recently and she actually assured me that uh sometimes redundancy is is great for clarity and you'd rather have clarity and the reader is not going to mind it because as a reader you want to know what's going on all the time those kind of redundancies or seemingly redundant things um, are okay because they're emphasizing clarity. That's what I changed it to. So I thought it was a manner of speaking this threat of tearing me in eight pieces because it, it continues directly into that. Mina was a place of, <clears throat> was a peaceful place, too isolated to be touched by the savage battles of the clans. I'd never imagined men and women could have, could actually be torn in eight pieces. So I think that's why you need this callback here, the new one I did, because he doesn't bring back, he, he kind of continues into this thought process of being torn into eight pieces, but you don't see that until you get down here. And so, as I said, only because there's such a long, it's a beautiful paragraph, by the way, long paragraph here, it's too big of a gap, honestly. Now, it could just be me. Uh, I'm sure there's plenty of other readers that wouldn't have an issue with it, but these are the kind of things I look for. So let's continue. Um, he goes on describing the village. I'd never imagined men and women could actually be torn in eight pieces. Their strong, honey-colored limbs wrenched from their sockets and thrown down to the waiting dogs, raised among the hidden. With all their gentleness, I did not know men did such things to each other. Then we go on. I turn 15, so it's it's more it's more expository stuff. He's telling you who he is. Uh, her mother and his mother began to lose their wrestling matches, so he's growing stronger. I grew six inches in a year, and by the time I was 16, I was taller than my stepfather. He grumbled more often that I should settle down, stop roaming the mountain like a wild monkey, marry into one of the village families. I did not mind the idea of marriage to one of the other girls I'd grown up with. And that summer, I worked harder alongside him, ready to take my place among the men of the village. But every now and, again, now and then, I could not resist the lure of the mountain. And the end of the day, I slipped away through the bamboo grove with its tall, smooth trunks. Again, you see this run on the smooth trunks and green slanting light up the rocky path past the shrine of the mountain god. I can just, you know, just that pace. You're following this kid up to the shrine. Like it's as if a camera is just tracking along with him. And that's why this works visually and from characterization up the rocky path past the shrine of the mountain god where the villagers left offerings of millet and oranges into the forest of birch and cedar, where the cuckoo and the nightingale called enticingly, where I watched foxes and deer and heard the melancholy cries of kites overhead. So you, you can see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing that for effect. I'm just trying to emphasize it a little bit. Yeah, just great stuff. It's super consistent. You want the consistency and it does multiple things. It's visual. It carries the, the reader. Uh, throughout the scene, using all of the senses, it, it it exemplifies character, being a kid, you know, just on and on and on and on and on. Then we move to the next part. That evening, I'd been right over the mountain to a place where the best mushrooms grew. I had a cloth full of them, the little white ones like threads and the dark orange ones like fans. I was thinking how pleased my mother would be. Now the mushrooms would still my stepfather's scolding. 
I could, you know, again, kids always trying to get acceptance from their parents. I could always, I could already taste them on my tongue. As I ran through the bamboo and out into the rice fields where the red autumn lilies were already in flower, I thought I could smell cooking on the wind. You know, I'm sure as I read this, and maybe you're scrubbing through, you know, scanning it with your eyes, but, you know, amazing stuff. The village dogs were barking. Just see sound, smell, taste, everything. As they often did at the end of the day, the smell grew stronger and turned acrid. I was not frightened, not then, but some premonition made my heart start to beat more quickly. There was a fire ahead of me. So now we're getting into conflict, which is great. This Look, look how quickly. I mean, we already have a little bit of conflict and character building up here, but this is when things go down. And look, look how quickly we're already, this first line hooks you. You're in this world. You're with this kid. I mean, th mother threatened to tear me in eight pieces. What a great hook. And then we get a little bit of exposition. And while info dumps, you know, are, are frowned upon, I feel like it really works here because it's done in such a colorful and vivid way. Uh, very artfully too. It just, it, it really, it's, it puts you into the scene. You can visualize everything. It doesn't feel like just a bunch of information given to you. And then right at the end of that, uh, we do have more action, right? So these expository dumps are, 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 they're short and they're enough and they're, they're just peppered throughout with, um, with vivid description. Fires often broke out in the village. Almost everything we owned was made of wood or straw, but I could hear, but I, could hear no shouting, no sounds of the buckets being passed hand to hand. None of the usual cries or curses. The cicadas shrilled as loudly as ever. Frogs were calling from the patties. I made uh, some minor edits here because I felt like while this is fine, it feels kind of uh, it feels kind of like a stutter. Like I, I kind of I kind of stumbled, and maybe that was the that was uh, for effect. Semicolons always make me feel like I'm stumbling. So what I did is I, I combined these two into uh, the cicadas shrilled as loudly as ever and frogs called from patties. So I feel like just combining those has a little bit better flow than the cicadas shrilled as loudly as ever. Frogs were calling from the patties. Also, we're, we're calling. Um, you can always use a singular verb for this. Uh, sometimes it just feels better. Uh, in this case, it doesn't bother me that bad. But I did, um, it did change it, I believe, to, yeah, and frogs called from the patties. And here, another thing, uh, this next sentence, in the distance, thunder echoed round the mountains. The air was heavy and humid. Now, again, I think this could work because we're kind of stopping. It's, it's he's, he's quickly, quickly moving, quickly moving, quickly moving, and it hits you, and it hits you, and it hits you. But I decided to kind of, you know, still make it, have that stutter but also just make it flow a little bit better and i changed it to um man it is tough to look back and forth to know i should probably highlight these the air heavy and humid carried the thunder round the distant mountains so i think you get the same effect there because you have that um you have the air heavy and humid you know it's kind of a beat it's a pause it's a pause carried the thunder round the distant mountains so it doesn't really change the line a whole lot, but it gives a little bit more flow. To me, this kind of hangs a bit. And again, that could be intent. That could be intended to be that way, but it just kind of felt wrong for me, to me. I was sweating, but the sweat was turning cold on my forehead. I jumped across the ditch of the last terrace field and looked down to where my home had always been. The house was gone. So that's a good short sentence with impact. I went closer. Flame still crept up and licked at the blackened beams. There was no sign of my mother or my sisters. I tried to call out, but my but my tongue had suddenly become too big for my mouth, and the smoke was choking me and making my eyes stream. The whole village was on fire, but where was everyone? Now, what's great about this is there's such a contrast. So, as I mentioned up here, we have these long runoff run on sentences that just kind of show action and they speed everything up. Now we're slowing down. I went closer, period. Flames still crept and licked at the blackened beams, period. So we're creating this beautiful tempo. We feel this guy, this kid just creeping closer to this, this fire. And then, uh, then the screaming began. I talk about white space a lot. I talk about um, uh, paragraphs that are one sentence or one words that could be fragments. 
great, great technique to add emphasis. And this is a great sentence for emphasis. Then the screaming began. Came from the direction of the shrine, around which most of the houses clustered. It was like the sound of a dog howling in pain, except the dog could speak human words, scream them in agony. That's a, that's a really cool line because it's, it's a twisted way, uh, obviously, to hear a dog, but I, I love it because, you know, I'm sure you've seen those videos where it appears as if dogs are talking. While those are humorous, uh, these are definitely, it's more of the horror of the thing. It's very horrific. I thought I recognized the prayers of the hidden and all the hairs stood up on my neck and arms. Slipping like a ghost between the burning houses, I went towards the sound. The village was deserted. This is kind of a great echo to this. You'll notice a lot of these kinds of patterns uh, and even this. Short sentences, uh, it creates a great it creates great um, suspense. I could not imagine where everyone had gone. I told myself they had run away. My mother had taken my sisters to the safety of the forest. I would go and find them just as soon as I had found out who was screaming. But as I stepped out of the alley into the main street, I saw two men lying on the ground. A soft evening rain was beginning to fall. and they. So I changed this because... So when you're talking in the past tense... So this, even though we write in the past tense, a lot of the time, it's, it's probably the most common tense um, you see fiction in. You try to avoid this. I've had editors tell me like something's not beginning, right? You're, you're telling a story that has happened. So even though this is this kind of this works, it's, it's not inherently incorrect. Um, it feel it may feel a little bit off off because it, it feels as if you're trying to be in the present tense in a way something is beginning to happen but all of this is in the past tense everything's happened already and so that's a really easy fix because all it is is you just you remove that you could just say a soft here it is a soft evening rain fell and they look surprised super easy fix uh same thing as we're lying uh again not inherently wrong but you could just change that to lay you could simplify it it's always good to try to um, make your writing as concise as possible uh, sometimes this does sound better and i'm sure this sounded well this sounded great to her and so she kept it in there so they had no idea why they lay there in the rain um, again personal preference but something to look out for sometimes you know he was walking. He walked. You could just say he walked. You don't need was walking. Now, I do it plenty of times because sometimes it just sounds right to me. Nine times out of ten, uh, when you go through a read-through, especially when you've had something set aside for a while, you'll feel like, okay, I, I can see why it is it is frowned upon or advised against to use this kind of language. So I usually change it. One of them was my stepfather. Again, a great, she did it again white space single paragraph single line it's great I, I i really have hopefully you can see how much i'm gushing about the writing here i love it it does multiple things it's incredibly visual it's incredibly cinematic exactly what i try to go for my writing and i think that that is what you need to do i mean as writers we're competing with films and mobile games and video games and all of these things and youtube <laughs> speaking of youtube here i am um, so try to make your writing as cinematic as possible. And I think that, um, Leanne Hearn, she, she succeeded in spades. So let's talk about the final, final thoughts here. Hey, we made it to the end. That wasn't so bad, right? That wasn't the hour long way of Kings episode. And, um, I want to thank you, Matt, again, I'm sure you're, hopefully you're watching this. This one's for you, man. My line of thinking or my, the way I thought about this series originally was to take novels that I, that were successful, wildly successful and ones that just did not resonate with me and, uh, edit them in a, in such a way where I feel like they could be improved to show other people out there that. Even the big guys can be better. Even the big guys and the big girls, they can get better. Everyone can get better. It's always a learning experience. I'm really glad that Matt, that he suggested this one. And when I read it, I was kind of surprised because I told him immediately, I said, this is really good. Like, I don't think there's going to be much here. And then it got me thinking, like, why, why would I just have a bunch of negatives, right? Why would I just kind of uh, fix writing out there? Why don't I just celebrate great writing as well? And so you can see here, I have very minor edits and they are arguably unnecessary. They're just things that, um, very small things that I felt could improve it slightly. And this is 
personal taste here. Obviously, I'm doing this. This is my opinion. But I think it gives it a little bit more flow. But it's funny because as I was going through it and as I was telling you my thought process, I was kind of going back saying, well, you know, it's not so bad. And it's, it's not. It's not. This is a great example of writing. And I, that's why I highly encourage you to read wide. I, I would have never found this, this book if it weren't for, for Matt. And so uh, thank you again for the recommendation. Um, I learned a lot personally from this one. So you, viewer out there, if you have a recommendation of a book that you love, a book that you hate, the first five pages of it, and you would like me to analyze it, give my opinion, react to it, whatever you want to call these videos, writing reaction videos, is that going to be a thing now? Man, that's, uh, that's an interesting concept, but maybe it will help the YouTube algorithm. But anyway, I will keep this short. Thank you again for watching. I know these are long. I know these are for a very niche audience. So those of you who enjoy these, please like the video if you'd like to support the channel. Subscribe if you like story-related content. And also, uh, if you'd like to see me create and not just critique, check out my series, Worth 1,000 Words, where I write a 1,000-word short story every week based on a piece of artwork without an outline at all. And you can check out my published books. You can check out my Discord. Hang out with me on my live streams. All of those are down in the description box. So... Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next one.